and it touched the button so we're on part two anyways let's just do this again pumpkin notice these trails caused by a caterpillar of some sort on the leaf pumpkin ripening turning orange it's also got uh, Fusarium, that's correct pronunciation, Fusarium, Crown Rot, notice, see how this is decaying, and uh, the yellowing in the burnt condition of the edge of the leaf. It's also got parasites, leaf parasites. This one seems pretty clean. Let me show you one that's infested. This has got Fusarium and it's dying. Look, it's got a little pumpkin. The pumpkin's not gonna get much bigger. And the Fusarium's killing it. Notice these decayed leaves down here and how the stems are turning orange. I mean, turning pale, pale kind of withering. And the leaves are yellow, that's Fusarium. There's a whole pile that's destroyed. I pulled them up. This is still living. Here's a root, a, a, a good example of pumpkin root system. Look, see how they, see how they snake, and they start putting out their pumpkin. That this one's infested with bug and fusarium, so it was a goner. I pulled it up, although it probably could have produced some fruit. This is a good specimen though, very nice. See how long it is? Now, this is a baby. They get much, much larger than this and produce huge pumpkins, some species. Anyways, this is a pile of pumpkins that bit the dust because of Fasarium. And uh, this one I've left. It's got a nice stem. I'm trying to transplant some that are affected with Fusarium. This one's got a living fruit, but notice how it's genetically deformed. See how it's deformed? Look, this is not normal root growth and the plant is dwarfed, first of all. Now, is this plant fertile? I don't know. Is it pollinated? It looks to be maybe if it doesn't turn yellow but it's already got fusarium this leaf is healthy so it has a chance maybe i transplanted it same with this we're gonna see it's all experiment it's agricultural experiment 101 uh, this one is a viable stem and stalk the decay down here the base is somewhat normal it's not suffering too bad but this is not a good indication right here this seems to be fusarium affected right here this one very much so so we're gonna not water it we're gonna just let it be and see what's up because this ground is very moist that can promote decay here's another root system that was attacked by rats see this one's good this one was attacked by rats but they heal themselves anyways so that's there's like three pumpkin plant systems in here and uh, they're all pretty much goners but it's an experiment and we're seeing uh, what nature at work basically this big pile of uh, infant they're dwarfed uh, I didn't block them and so there wasn't enough space for the individual plants to expand within their own turf so they dwarfed and that's no good uh, so live and learn I guess the moral of the story is block seed uh, plant but then you have to block the plants you know to leave enough space the recommended spacing for the plant 
which in this case would be at least a foot around per plant, if not two feet, depending on the size of the pumpkin, because pumpkins really stretch out, as you can see on that one. <clears throat> Let me show you some infested leaf. This, this is the one that's infested the most. See these brown little leaf mites? Notice this one. He's got colonies upon colonies upon colonies of infants and adults and eggs. And it's just disgusting. And that's the top side. If you look at the, the back side, look at the back side. They're just covered completely disgustingly covered. Ugh. Ugh. So that's a parasite of some sort. It's a very small type of leaf mite. I have to look it up and see what it is. But uh, that would be probably something you'd want to handle with uh, if you're going to do it organically. I think I'd try red hot chili peppers. Uh, you take red hot chili peppers, dried ones, with, you buy a bag of them down at the store for a buck, you put them in a gallon of water and you let it soak and then you use that, don't get any in your eyes. And that chili pepper uh, spray, you spray it on the leaf and that's supposed to be uh, one of the best uh, organic insect repellents. Anyways, here's some male pumpkin flowers. Male pumpkin flowers. And I picked them so I could harvest the pollen on them. Anyways, I got four of those. I was sitting around the other day and listening to music, and I noticed this jukebox on the best of the doobies. It's missing some letters. It's missing the I, H, and it goes to J. It's missing the I. And it's missing the O N O P. And it's missing uh, X, Y, and Z. So it's I O X, Y, Z. It only goes to eight. <clears throat> Something about nine, I guess. I don't know what. I took a photo. A flash shot. <coughs> Anyways, <clears throat> X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z was. Uh, Jimmy Page, John Anderson, Chris, Chris Squire, I think, and uh, Steve Howe. It was Steve Howe, Chris Squire, and Jimmy Page, XYZ. And then John Anderson joined them and they became Asia or something. I don't know. Anyway, crazy stuff. So this is uh, Trapper Red signing off with uh, another early morning before 7 o'clock kind of video. Sun's coming up. It's August. I think it's the 8th. 7th or 8th. It's Monday. Yeah. August 6th, uh, years and years and years back, I summited San Gregorio on August 6th. And at the summit that day, it was cloud, partially cloudy. Sun was shining. It was uh, the wind was blowing, a good 30, 40 miles an hour. It was 32 degrees at the summit, freezing my, enough to where my hands went numb. August 6th, and the blackberry, I mean the blueberries down below had already ripened, so it was a sweet trip all the way up because I got to pick raspberries and blueberries and elderberries and all kinds of berries that were growing along and the bears were up there too so the bears came to visit me and I had a bear encounter uh, the next day it's the very next day I came down from the summit and uh, was camped in Vivian Creek I'd spent the first night in Vivian Creek and then I summited the next day and came back down all in one day Spent the second night in Vivian Creek. And that's when the bears came to visit me two nights in a row when I was sleeping. And so then I went down to town, Forest Falls, the third day. 
see uh, uh, an Indian I met about some mushrooms, some magic mushrooms. And uh, I didn't have any weed. <coughs> Anyways, so uh, I went to make a phone call, but there wasn't any phone operation. They'd taken out the public phone because of druggies or something. I don't know. So anyways, I went and I visited this Indian that I'd met and procured some mad, more magic mushrooms. And went back up on the mountain. And when I went up, I noticed that the can of Vienna sausage was on the trail about halfway up. And I, I found it peculiar because it was the same kind that I had. And I thought about it, I go, that looks like mine. And my mine's up in my pack, bear proof, t uh, tied up with my climbing rope in this big coulter pine. And uh, I didn't think too much of it, but going down to town, I had passed going across the creek, Mill Creek. I passed uh, a hiker, and then I think two or three. Boy Scouts. So I don't know who messed with my pack, but somebody messed with my pack and took it down and stole my food and left some stuff, I guess, because when I got back up there, there was a mama bear and her baby. And the mama was scratching her back on this big coulter pine and drinking the last of my pineapple juice after it eaten, you know, candy bars and whatever the hell else they left. Obviously, somebody stole most of my food because I found a can of Venus sausage halfway down the trail and it wasn't the bears. They would have eaten it. So humans vandalized my pack and then left it and the bears took the rest that they didn't take. But they slimed all over my stuff and it smelled horrible. <laughs> Anyways, I was up and <laughs> I had this bear encounter. I wasn't expecting it. I just reacted like an animal. I saw the mama drinking and the last of my juice and I was mad about, because I was going to do the nine. I had enough food to go do the nine. I was going to go back up and bag the rest of the peaks. Just, I was up there for you know a week, or however long it took, two weeks, didn't matter. But instead, I my whole trip was ruined by this mama bear and her baby. So it was kind of like Yogi and Boo Boo, you know? And I, grabbed a, I looked down and I grabbed a rock that was about the size of a baseball. And I just pitched it as hard as I could at that bear because I was mad, not even thinking. <laughs> Talk about mad. And uh, the, luckily for me, the rock curved and hit the tree right beside the bear and bark flew off and the bark hit the bear in the face which really scared the bear, plus it was a loud report. So the baby hit, split instantly, and bounding as soon as it seen me. And the mama was drinking the pineapple juice, like I said, and just looked at me like, what's that, you know? And I picked up that rock and I threw it. And when it reported off the bark of the tree, that bear must have leapt 15 feet in one bound up that trunk of that tree, disappeared on the other side, and I never seen it again. I ran the other way because I was scared. When I came back with a club in hand ready to do battle if I had to because I had no weaponry, nothing. Um, tent pole, something, you know, no. So I picked up a club, you know, I was ready to do battle with a club if I had to. And uh, bear wasn't nowhere to be found. I was glad of that, real glad. So I took all my stuff and uh, I left, packed up my tent, folded that down, threw all my junk in a sleeping bag that I found up there in a hollow out tree that burned out tree that I posted on the Twitter. It was a sleeping bag wrapped up in red tape. So I took that sleeping bag took the red tape off of it, threw my shit in it, and made a like coolie pack out of my climbing rope, and hoofed it down the forest falls with all my junk. It was bear slime. And if you've never smelt bear slime before, and bear piss, 
You don't know.